Thank you, Lord. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Always good to see you. Yeah. Always good to see you. Take the time. 
time you meet. How many times in our lives have we received news and the lost heard something that upset us? It's okay to separate it. See, part of me thinks it would have been much easier for Jesus to stay out there on the water and to stay away from everybody and to stay there and just not deal with it. Right? It would have been a lot easier. You know, and I, I think sometimes we can get caught up where it, 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 that's easier for us stay away from everybody and shut the world up. You know, I, I know we can get to a place like that. I, I, I've gotten to a place like that where I just don't want to deal with anybody else's stuff because I'm dealing with my stuff. But I, I want to show you something. Stick with me here, okay? Let's go to verse 14. So Jesus is on the water and he's working his way back to the shoreline. Like I said, he probably would have, he probably wanted to stay out there no longer, but no, he worked his way in. He saw the crowd of people. He saw the crowd of people. When Jesus landed and he saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. This is what I'm getting to. Here I read is when I hear I read the scripture, Jesus took the moment that he needed out on that water. He, he took the moment that he needed. Like I said, it's okay for us to take the moment that we need. But he also understood that even though he received that bad news, that the work that his father sent him to do doesn't stop. Amen. It doesn't stop. He still had work to do. You know, and the same thing goes for us. Yeah, we're going to receive that bad news. And it's okay for us to sit back, digest it, do what we got to do that we all understand that God has called us to do something. And we've got to continue to move forward. We have to continue to do that work. See, it says here, and he had compassion and he began to heal their sin. He had work to do. The bad news about John, he, he accepted what, what had happened. But he still said, I have work to do. The Father said me to do work and I need to do it. See, those are the moments when our faith is tested the most. And I can guarantee you it's those moments that when those kind of things happen in our lives, you know, our, our faith is being tested, I can guarantee you also that your faith is also being watched. Your faith is also being watched by those around you. They're being, around, uh, it's being watched by your family. It's being watched by your kids. Your, whoever you're meeting, your friends. They want to see how you're going to respond. You know, because if you're standing, if you're walking around saying, I'm, my faith is solid, I stand on the rock of Jesus, and you're walking around doing that all day, and this, but then all of a sudden you get this bad news, and guess what? Your faith is shaking, and you don't look, you're, it's gone. It's like, they're going to look at you and be like, what? I thought he was solid in the Lord. You know? It's being watched. As Christians, what we do, how we live, how we talk, how we live our lives, how we treat people, all that is being watched. It's being watched. Our faith is the most important thing in our walk with Christ. Without faith, there is no walk. Correct? Without faith, there is no walk. So if our faith has to be solved. And I know it can be hard at times. I know. I understand. Like I said, I go through. I go through. I can guarantee it's being watched. And 1 Timothy 4.12, which tells us, 1 Timothy 4.12 says, don't, anyone, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Set the example. In our faith, we're called to set an example. How can I say that my faith is in Jesus Christ in everything in my life, and then when, when, I, when something bad goes on or, or I get bad news, all of a sudden my faith is out the window. What kind of example do I set for my daughter that's sitting here in the corner? 
I'm not setting a very good example. What kind of example do I set for my wife? I'm not setting a very good example. It says, be, but set an example for the believers in speech, in comment, in love, and in faith. In faith. In faith. God has called us to set an example and be an example. So examples, so the examples we are setting to those I guarantee that are watching. They're watching us, we're setting an example. How many times has somebody come up to you and said, Man, bro, I see I see Jesus is just doing great things in your life. Because guess what? I guarantee you're setting that example. You're walking out your faith. You know? You're 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 everything about you. I told you that you can tell when somebody has a relationship with God and when somebody does it, you can just see it. You can see it and you can you can hear it in the way they talk. You can see it in the way they act. You know, and, and how they live their lives. You can see it. They're setting that example. Check this out. We read, we read, hearing of this, the crowds follow him on foot to from on foot from the town. Remember I said about setting an example? We read, hearing of this, the crowds follow him on foot from the towns. I wonder how many people standing there waiting for him to come off that boat. There were many of them there that wanted to see a miracle. It says, many of them brought their sick, and he healed their sick. A lot of them, I guarantee, were there for healing, bringing their, their sick to him to be healed for prayer. <clears throat> I guarantee nothing's changed today. I guarantee there was some of them there that wanted to see how he was going to respond to this news that he received. Was he going to be the same man he was before he got on that boat and went on the water? Or was he going to be different? Was his faith going to be the, the same? How was he going to respond? There, there's people in, our, in the world that, that want to see us fall. They want to see us fail. It, I'm not going to lie to you. They, they do. They, they, they're waiting for us to trip up and say, I knew it. I told you. How many people maybe have we crossed paths or we, or we hurt in the past that, that are just waiting for us to fall? To say, oh, I knew it wasn't real. I knew all that Jesus mumbo jumbo you were spitting wasn't real. You just took this right here. Look, you're saying now you're back to being the same old person you were before. There's going to be people. So I wonder how many people were on that shoreline who are just waiting to see you. Who was going to come off that hook? We're going to go through it. We're going to face these things, these trials. We're going to, we're going to, our faith is going to be tested all the time. See, and it's those moments that our, our faith is tested. How are we going to respond? What kind of example we set? In, in 1 Peter 1 through 7, it tells us these trials will show you that your faith is genuine. Is your faith genuine? It is being tested as fire test and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You want to praise and glorify God? You want to praise and glorify God? Stand firm on your faith. Faith has to be solid. Solid faith is how we pray and we glorify God. Then I share my last word is solid faith is how we worship God. You want to worship God? Have strong faith, solid faith. Even through the times you're going to receive the bad news. Even through the times when you feel like you're going through the worst time of your life. There's no better example that I know Pastor preaches on it, Sister Stacy speaks on it, 
But they set the example when they lost their son. I can never imagine going through something like that. But Pastor was up here preaching the word of God. Stacy was at. It was like, man, you could see what their faith was. You could see the foundation that they had built their lives on. It was like, man, they 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 took a step back. They reflected on what they were going through. But they both understood that the work that God had them doing wasn't done. Just like Jesus, when he got off the boat, he thought, and all those people were there, the crowd there. It would have been easy. I remember when I lost my mom. I lost my mom, and it's been three years. Three years. So it hasn't been long. You know, and, but I knew who she was. She was a prayer warrior. I believe she, her prayer is what got me back in the serving of the Lord. So he fixed and mended our relationship in the end and gave our, our relationship. It was a good, it was in a good place because it wasn't for many years. You know, but losing my mom, that's hard. It was hard for me. But I, I, at the same time, I celebrated it because I knew where she went. And I got the opportunity to share that back home with my family, all my uncles and my aunts and my cousins and my brothers. I got to stand up there and share who she was and share my faith. And then it was like, guess what? I celebrated her. Peace to be hurt. But man, she's in a much better place than I am. Right. I've got to celebrate that. That was me standing on my faith and understanding, look, Jesus is the rock. He's my faith. i got to stand on that no longer. Because that was hard. That was a hard thing for me to do. I'm the baby. Right? I'm the baby of the group. i got to stand up there on my faith and say, look, give it all to Christ. Share the word, share with my family, and I hope they spoke to them. And I set the example. I believe I set the example, and I, I believe that some of them might have accepted Christ in their heart. Amen. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe that. Like I said, you want to praise and you want to glorify and honor our Father in heaven? Stand firm on your faith. Stand firm on your faith. There is no, nothing more precious than our faith. Not even gold is more precious than our faith. But this, this, let's jump to verse 15. In verse 15 it says, look, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can, they, they can go to the villages and buy themselves food. Jesus replied, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish to answer. Bring them here to me, he said. Okay. Stick with me. Jesus was on the boat. He got off. He had compassion for them. He began to do it. He could have stopped right there. He could have said, okay, I'm done. He could have listened to the disciples. The disciples told him what? Send, you know, send the crown away. Let them go and get something to eat. He could have said, all right, you're right. Let them go away. It's been a long day. We've healed. I don't know how many people we prayed for. I don't know how many people. He could have said, all right, okay, you're right. But he didn't. He didn't. This is how he responded. He replied, they don't need to go away. Check this out. This is what jumped out at me. You give them something to eat. He didn't say, I'm going to give them something to eat. He said, you, he was telling the disciples, you give him something to eat. Right? I picture myself in the story and the reaction on their face, like, try to, just try to imagine it. You know, all day they would continually, you know, disciples are probably tired. Crowds, and, you know how in some, of the, in some of the scripture we read that people were just pushing against each other, just trying to touch the cloak of Jesus, just to get healed, right? So can you imagine 
they're just probably working their way trying to get people to, you know, not be so crowded and trying to make it kind of more organized, like, okay, you know, go ahead, your children. The children, I bet you they were tired also. You know, I bet you they were worn down mentally and physically. I bet you they were. And now he tells them, they don't need to go away. You go feed them something. So I tried to imagine the look on their face. What? We're not done. They didn't have any faith because they didn't think they had enough food to feed them. We're not done. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there, man. Jesus said, no, you're not done. You're not done. You're going to feed them now. And I picture the disciples looking at the basket. Look at all the people. But we only have five fish. I mean, five loaves of bread and two fish. Yeah, grab one, put one in your pocket. Right. Right. You only have five loaves of bread and two fish. <laughs> and he says in 17, we, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. And he has it. What did Jesus say? Bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. Don't worry about how many loaves of bread or how many fish you have. Don't worry about that. Bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. See, our job as Christians is to help lead unbelievers to Christ. We're to help lead them there. There's nothing that we can do to get them saved. Jesus saves them. But we can help lead them there. Right? See, to share our faith, to share our testimonies, to share what God has done in our lives, what Jesus is doing in our lives, that's what we're called to do. Those are our testimonies. That's our faith. I'm going to ask you right now. Who shared their faith with somebody today? Amen. Who shared their testimony with somebody today? Amen. That's something we have to ask ourselves. Like I said, I don't boast and I don't want to boast. I just, I'm glad that God can use me in a way to, to, to glorify Him. I got to share it with somebody at Circle K Health back the other day. He was outside, it was hot. He had a soda, but he looked hungry. Brother, you're hungry. Yeah. So we'll come inside and see something to eat. He said, oh, what about one of those big burritos? He got a big burrito. I said, get it. Warm it up. Do what you got to do. He got his warm it up. He said, hey, man, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. No, check this out. Jesus loves you. I said, Jesus loves you. But before I walk out the door, I started, I, I got the opportunity to pray for him five feet away from the hot dog warm. In circle K. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In circle K. That's right. We can't let those moments pass us by. We have to share our faith. We have to share what Jesus is doing in our lives. Our testimonies are the most important thing in our walk. Pastor has a picture of just, that's a testimony in itself, right? Wow, people tell me. What about your testimony? Your testimony is something that God has given you to share with people. To share it. See, we're, we're called to share the word of God. Share the word of God with the people with the, with the lost. We're called to pray for them. And show them, and when we pray for them, it's showing them, it's showing them our faith that we have in Christ, that Christ is going to answer their need. Right? I'll pray for you. Show me my faith. We lead by example. If we do our part and help lead them to Christ, Christ does the rest. Amen. Let's go to jump to 19. Let's jump to 19. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up into heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. He then gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Remember, I said, don't worry about what's there. Don't worry about how many loaves of bread there are or how many fish. Bring them to me. He lifted them up to heaven. He prayed over them, broke them, and said, Now have enough. 
Jesus gave the two fish and the broken loaf to the disciples and they handed them out to Peter. I bet you as they walked around, picture as they walked around, they just kept wondering, like handing out bread, and it was like never ending, just like, amen. It looked like there's no bottom here, just keep coming. They just keep coming. Bread just keep falling out, right? Fish, just keep coming, just fit. It's five thousand tons, five thousand people. Nine clean minutes. Can you imagine? Ooh. You see how Jesus provided the miracle? Jesus provided the miracle, right? But he used the disciples to hand out that miracle. Right? There's nothing that we can do. We're just an instrument. We are just a vessel that Christ uses. And we are we are nothing. We are just the best of that Christ. And here's nothing. Like I said, I can't, I, there's nothing I can do. I can't save time. But Jesus can. Amen. Right? I'm the vessel that God's going to use to help a brother come to Christ. Right? Like the example that I'm seeing. Amen. Same thing happened here. Jesus said, don't worry about it. I, I got, I'll provide. I'm going to provide. I'm going to give the miracle. But I want you, like he told the disciples, you're going to feed them. That means you're going to, you're going to give the miracle. But the miracle comes from me. I'm just going to use you to do it. I'm just going to use you to do it. Like I said, they didn't provide the miracle. The disciples had, they were the hands and the feet. They were his hands and his feet that day. They walked around. They handed out the bread. They handed out the, the, the fish. They were his hands and his feet. Aren't we called to be his hands and his feet? Yep. Are we being his hands and his feet? I, I don't want to make anybody feel like they're not doing their part. Are you being the hands and the feet for Jesus? He wants to use the same way as he uses the disciples. We're called to, 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 to do and live the same way as the disciples. He wants us to, he wants to use us in the same way. But are we allowing him to? That's the question that I have. Are we allowing him to? It's easy to say I'm going to do it. And when it comes time to do it, do we do it? faith a little bit shaky when it's time to do it. Like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Do we get a little scared? Or do we get a little, uh, I want to say, um, <clears throat> anxious. Anxious. Oh. Makes the disciples type of faith in. Like, hey, I'm going to run out of fish. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to provide the need. You just need to do what I send you to do, and I'll provide that need. Too many times do we think do we think that we're doing it on our own and, and we think that we're gonna do it. No. Trust and faith that Jesus is gonna do it, and he'll do it. Okay. He'll provide the need. Oh, yes, we're living in a world. Can you imagine I'm looking at all the people that were there? I'm sure if he would have said, you know what, you're right, disciples, go ahead and just send them away and, and let them go get something to eat. How many people would have left hungry that day? They were there all day waiting for Jesus to come off the boat. They were waiting all day to try to get prayed for, to get healed. How many people would have left hungry that day on an empty stomach? Asking? We're living in a world that is spiritually hungry right now. That is starving. That is starving. And it's trying to feed itself everything else to try to fill itself up, to make itself feel full and feel better. And, and, and instead of going to, to God, they're, 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 they're dealing with, they're trying to just fill this on other stuff. Other stuff. We're living in a world that is spiritually starving. Right? 
we need to be like those disciples. We need to take the word of God out to the world, and we need to share them. Look, you're trying to fill yourself up with things of this world, and you're never going to be full. I know somebody who will fill you up. I know somebody who will who, who will not make you, you won't be hungry anymore. You won't be spiritually starving anymore. I know somebody who can do that for you. You don't have to go out and search for scraps anymore. You want steak? He's got steak for you. Show them the way. Show them the way, the way to Jesus. Lead them. Help lead them there. Help lead them there. We're living in a world that is spiritually started. It tells us in Matthew 5, 6, it tells us, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Man, a world, right? It's thirsty for righteousness. They're looking for it. They're searching for it. It's right here. In John 6, 35, it tells us that Jesus says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, what does it say? Will never be hungry. Will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He says it right there in the word of God. Jesus, those are Jesus' words. And I highlight those in red. Right? I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. If you know somebody who is spiritually starving, lead them to Jesus. I guarantee they will no longer be hungry. It says it right there. They will no longer thirst. They will no longer be hungry. Psalms 107 9 tells us, For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. How can we, how can we not? share with others what Jesus is doing for us. How? Remember, you were spiritually smart one time, huh? Everybody in here was spiritually starving at one time. Somebody took the time out of their day to talk to you about Jesus. Somebody invited you to church and you showed up. They took that time to invite you. Or they took that time to share their testimony with you. Or they took that time to pray for you. It's not a coincidence that you hear here tonight. Someone helped lead you here tonight. They introduced you to Jesus Christ, right? Now you're not hungry no more. The hunger we have is because we want more of Jesus. But that other stuff that we were filling ourselves with out in the world, it doesn't even matter to us no more. We don't even crave it no more. I know I don't. I don't. I don't crave the things that had me out there in the world. Jesus got me full enough. Got me full enough to do the same thing for you. Right? But you gotta make sure that you're filling yourself with you gotta make sure that you if you're 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 feeding yourself the word daily, that you're diving into a word and you're and you're in prayer and you're, and, and you're surrounding yourself with kingdom-minded people. You gotta make sure that you're doing that daily. Because it can be a, we can get into a situation where hey, guess what? We're not feeding ourselves no more. We're not feeding ourselves no more. And guess what? Then all of a sudden we start becoming hungry again. And then we start going out there trying to feed ourselves with other things besides the Word of God. And then we find ourselves in trouble. Don't do that. That's trouble. That's trouble. In verse 20 it says, They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 back basket pools of broken pieces that were, that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. They all ate and they were satisfied. Man. 
There's more than enough. God has more than enough to go around. Right? Amen. The disciples were obedient. They said, okay, Lord, we're going to we'll, we'll hand out, we'll do it. And they were left over for them. They said, how many baskets? Twelve. Twelve baskets. Can you, so what I'm saying, can you imagine if you're obedient and you're faithful? and you do what God tells you to do, the blessing that he's going to have for you after? Amen. That's right. Can you imagine? Man, I bet you the disciples, they were probably earlier before the, the people started showing up, they are like, there's 12 months, there's five fish, two fish, I'll cut this fish, like this piece, this piece, this piece, you get this much, and then you get this much, and then we have to kind of make it last a little longer to try to eat all of it at one time. <laughs> Save something for later. <laughs> right? But after they did what God, what Jesus had told them to do, they had leftovers. Twelve baskets full of leftovers. After he blessed it all. After he blessed it all. Exactly. They were obedient. They were faithful. They did what God told them to do. They were in his hand and his feet. Man, and he had left them abundantly. I bet you they went to bed with full stomach and there were still leftovers for the next day. Amen. Right? God still bless us if we stand firm in our faith. If we're obedient and we stand firm faithfully and we just be submissive, he is going to bless us abundantly. It's there. It says it there. They all ate and they were satisfied. There was so much to go around. See, with God, there's more than enough to go around, but we have to be willing to share with others what God has blessed us with. Amen. See, Blessings for us are not meant for us to keep. Blessings for us are to share with somebody else. Because they're just going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming, right? Why am I going to keep stacking blessings like that? I'm going to share that with somebody else. Your blessing is in order to keep. Remember that. You ever heard, you know, we've all been here said, man, somebody blessed me today with something to eat. Guess what? I'm going to bless somebody else with something. Share that blessing with somebody. It's not yours to keep. See, this is the attitude that we're supposed to have during the hardest times in our lives. But it's not easy. I know it's not easy. It's not. I believe there's more evidence in our faith that we can share it with others, even in our worship. Even the worst times that we're going through, our faith is the evidence that we can share with people. That it's what's going to, that they're going to see is what's going to help them be like, okay, be standing firm on the rock. How's your faith? How, how are you dealing with the situation? How are you dealing with the news, the bad news that you received? Like I said earlier, it's okay to take a moment. It's okay, we all heard, we all heard. It's okay not to be okay, right? It's okay not to be okay. But it's not okay to stay that way. Right? It's not okay to stay that way. We're not called to stay in that mindset. There's work to do. We have kingdom work to do. Just because we move forward and we, and we continue doing work for the kingdom doesn't mean that we don't care. It doesn't mean that we're not hurting. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're not mourning. It doesn't mean, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It just, we understand there's more work to do. And that's what I think Jesus said when he got off the boat. My father sent me, I have work to do. So he began healing the sick. So tonight's word was, how are you going to respond when you're faced with your worst moments? What is your faith going to do? You need to take that time to spend that too. But don't stay in that mindset. And that's how we're not going to want to stay. Right? Yes. Uh, I'll close with that tonight. <coughs> I hope that it spoke to somebody. I didn't know how it was going to go forward, but hey, that's not my job. Don't worry about that. Right? Amen. Amen. Maybe it spoke to somebody. Just think just a little bit different today. Right? Good night, everybody on Facebook world. God bless. Hope to see you again next week and see you at church on Sunday. And if you uh, don't have a church to go to, turn to Port Hopeville. Starts at 945. Stay blessed. God bless.
Good night.